In the 1960s, this semi-desert area was underwater and formed part of the Aral Sea. At the time, it was the fourth largest lake in the world, but now it's just a tenth of its former size. In the Soviet era, one of the worst environmental tragedies was perpetrated when the rivers that fed into it were diverted to irrigate fields. We're driving away from the town of Munak, which once stood on the lake and into Aral Khan Desert that's replaced it. And we're going to visit a government program to grow plants that can reverse the desertification. Over a million hectares have already been covered with these plants. One of them is called Black Saxel and is renowned for its hardiness and its ability to withstand drought for long periods. They stop the salt and the sand from being whipped up into the air and carried by the wind to populated areas. Plants hold the soil with their roots, keeping salt and sand on the ground. These plants emit oxygen and absorb carbon dioxide. This is also a positive effect. Each year, sandstorms kick up more than 100 million tons of dust and pollutants, such as fertilizers and pesticides, from where the bottom of the Aral Sea used to be. Now, Black Saxel acts as a shield. Saxel serves as a mechanical obstacle. One such saxol plant can retain one ton of toxic sand and salt. If it weren't for all this, this would have risen into the air and been carried over long distances. When the Aral Sea disappeared, not only did local people lose a fishing industry that had supplied the Soviet Union with a sixth of its fish supply, they also suffered health problems from the toxic dust in the air. The sea had irrigated a desert where cotton and other crops could be grown, but as it did, it steadily shrunk. In just half a century, only 10% of the sea is left, and the water continues to drain. What remains has been compared to Israel's Dead Sea, one of the saltiest bodies of inland water in the world. Here it is, the edge of the constantly disappearing Western Aral Sea. The salt concentration is so high here that there is no more fish left. The edge of the water is now 150 kilometers away from Munak, which was once a thriving port city. One project that aims to rehabilitate the region is called My Garden in the Aral Sea. This green patch of woodland is located just a few minutes' drive from Munak. The goal is to plant one million trees. Ash, elm, willow and catalpa trees have all been chosen for their drought resistance and hardiness. Slowly, the desertification is being reversed. Our task is to restore the ecosystem of this region so that such oases are created in other settlements. The goal is to help counteract the spread of salty sand and prevent soil erosion. Three weather stations will also be built in Munak district, which will help monitor the re-greening process. It's been partly paid for by USAID, the United States Government Aid Agency. The data from these weather stations will be used by farmers to know when to better plant their crops, as well as the scientific community and the governments on how to address the environmental challenges in the Aral Sea region. In 2018, the UN Aral Sea Trust Fund was created, and to date it's raised $60 million, with Uzbekistan and the EU being the largest donors. The goal is to have a common strategy for the Aral Sea region. The fund has implemented a lot of projects. The main area is healthcare, and a lot of work has been done to provide the population with drinking water, agriculture, the efficient use of water resources, and gardens. The fund supports local vulnerable citizens by helping them grow animal feed using a hydroponic system that doesn't need soil. It's allowed Ijan Borabayeva to successfully grow plants for her sheep at home in summer and winter. The soil outside is salty and difficult to grow on. In the hydroponic system, wheat grows well and can save space. And these solutions are not just appropriate to the Aral Sea region, they can also be adopted in other parts of the world that are suffering from desertification.